I've got my one Carolina shirt on from my Palmetto Shirt Company. Um, first of all, I'd like to send our thoughts and prayers to everyone that's been affected by Hurricane Florence on the North and South Carolina coast. Um, Hurricane, Hurricane Florence has left many regions of our state and the state of North Carolina in need. The One Carolina T-shirt is specifically for the d disaster re relief. The Palmetto Shirt Company will donate all of their T-shirt proceeds to Habitat for Humanity affiliates in the affected regions of North and South Carolina to help rebuild and provide aid. Our athletic department is also accepting donations of clothing, water, food, uh, at the Rice Center, uh, you can drop those items off there, and all donations will obviously be taken to the Rice Center. So it's a very unfortunate situation. I still think half a million people are out of power. Uh, Flooding is obviously an issue and very sensitive here because of what happened in 2015. So all thoughts and prayers are with those people right now in a very difficult time. Um, we play Vanderbilt in uh, Nashville at 4 o'clock, SEC Network on Saturday. Uh, Derek Mason's got a really good football team. You watched him last week go to Notre Dame. And, you know, turned the ball over three times, one on the one going in to score, another interception in the end zone. Uh, but, uh, you know, play, played extremely well in that football game. Offensively, Kyle Shermer is a four-year starter, an outstanding player, a guy that uh, you, you gain a lot of respect when you watch the tape and how he orchestrates and runs the offense. They got a lot of confidence in him and, and how he runs the team, and he does an outstanding job. Four quality backs in Vaughn, blasting game, Wakefield and Crawford, all very capable. Uh, use them twice, two, uh, two, two at a time at times, but uh, very quality backs. Uh, Lipscomb, the receiver, is a really good player. Obviously, their go-to guy on the, on the perimeter. And Pinckney, the tight end, is a guy we faced for the last three years and been a very effective player for them. Defensive, they got a new defensive coordinator, Jason Tarver, who's known Derek for a long time. But the, what you see is a lot of experience and an aggressive play and an aggressive style of how they call the game. They got seven seniors starting on defense. So they've got a lot of experience and guys we faced throughout the years. And they do a really good job on teams. But our guys are looking forward to getting back on the field. Uh, obviously, last Wednesday, we canceled the Marshall game. Uh, our guys responded with an outstanding practice on Thursday, a very competitive practice. Uh, we lifted on, uh, on Friday. We gave them Saturday off. And we came back and had a Tuesday-like practice Sunday night, which I was very pleased with. We gave – now we're into our normal game week and had uh, Monday off and, uh, and practice this morning and did a nice job. So I'll open up for any questions. <laughs> well, uh, you mentioned that, you know, the guys knew about the cancellation on Wednesday, but how was just the focus and the energy in those couple of practices and now going into this week? Anything really good, higher man. or lower? I told the guys it'll be a distraction if you allow it to be. And uh, at the end of the day, it's it's a very sad, tragic situation. Uh, and it's awful. But there's nothing we can do about it. We're going to control what we can control, and that's our preparation. Uh, Thursday was an outstanding practice. Friday was a, a good lift in the weight room. Uh, gave our coaches a chance to start working on Vanderbilt. And then uh, I thought we had a very good practice Sunday and working into today. So I think they've handled it well. Well, first, uh, what did you do on Saturday? I watched a lot of football. Uh, so we were... Prepared for the worst, and we watched a lot of ball. Look, were you able to enjoy it, or just knowing that you were supposed to be playing on Saturday and you had to cancel, was it, uh, I don't know, did you go through some agonizing moments? It was very unusual, I can assure you of that, but uh, it was just different. It was good to you know spend the day with Carol and Jackson and Witt, and that's kind of what we did at our house, and uh, um, watched a lot of ball. I got nervous before every game, and we weren't even playing. So it's uh, as had anxiety before every game, and we weren't even playing. So, uh, but that's kind of normal. I don't think I've ever had that flavor, but go ahead, <laughs> Coach. Uh, with with up here, Coach. With with the time off, I guess. How do you guys guard against? maybe coming out flat. I know the guys are, are, are juiced up. They want to get out there. No different than an open week. And uh, we'll, we'll approach it. We've done a lot of good on good work and uh, as much as we could as far as also getting ready, prepared for a very good Vanderbilt team. Uh, so we, we've got a lot of fastball work. So I feel comfortable about that preparation. Well, has there been any discussions about making up uh, the lost game? And yeah. what's the status of that? We've, we've had numerous discussions, uh, Coach Tanner and myself, about the 20th, obviously, is our open week, or uh, depending how our season ends up, uh, December 1st. And, and once we know a little bit more about where we're headed with that, we'll certainly make, make that information available. 
first uh, is uh, any new injuries or anything? No, about that? DJ will be the only guy down. That's been a guy that's pretty contributed. And uh, Rico obviously didn't have his best game against Georgia. How was he afterwards? And, and when a player has a bad game as a coach, do you say anything different to him? Just let him be. Does that differentiate from player to player? Coach them all the same. You know, be very technical in their approach about you know three drops. Uh, you know, some things that we could have certainly cleaned up in the game. Uh, so. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, be very technical in our approach and what we need to do to, to improve. Uh, there was, wasn't a lack of want to or effort. And those are always, uh, you know, to me, you know, if you're being technical about an assignment, about a technique, about a fundamental, then we need to coach better. If we're talking in terms of effort, then we need to go a different direction, and that wasn't the issue. Was Vandy one of the games you watched on Saturday? Yes. Would you? What can you learn about maybe watching that game live instead of watching? I flow of the game, you know, not right now with so many, you know, people offensively with tempo and different things. What is the flow of the game? How is the game being administered? Uh, you know, get a good feel that you know. Obviously, they play extremely hard. It's easier sometimes to see that uh, when you're watching the TV copy as opposed to maybe a coach's copy uh, that we see. Uh, but those those things to me are are easy to see. Coach, two years ago, you got your first win at Vanderbilt. What are your memories from that night up there in Nashville? Elliott Fry, 55 yards. Uh, you know, just uh, guys battled in the game. Uh, didn't start out very good with a kickoff return that we reminded A.J. Turner about several times. Um, Debo dropped a punt, and we reminded him a couple times. So we uh, continued to battle in the game. It hit Debo on the speed sweep to score, and then uh, – Hit a couple field goals with, with Elliott there and then the 55-yarder there at the end. Uh, it was a huge kick and had all the confidence in the world he was going to make it. Uh, does having the surprise week, week off allow you guys to have some more time for self-evaluation? And what kind of stuff can you learn with a little bit of that extra time? Well, we did that and along with working on some, some opponents before our open date. You know, we had a little extra time when we found out Wednesday and we switched gears pretty quickly to look at some other guys. But... I think you're, you know, we're always self-evaluating what we need to do to improve and get better. You know that Danny Fennell, I guess, through the first three weeks of the season, and how much are you going to lean on him moving forward with, with DJ? Danny's playing well for us. He had a big sack against Georgia there uh, on the four-man pressure from the field, but he is a very steady player, continued to improve um, every year since we've been here, is a very dependable player. You know what you're going to get out of Danny all the time. You're going to get great effort. You're going to get mental and physical toughness in how he approaches the game. Uh, and I've been extremely proud of him right now and what, what he's able to do for us. He's our starter at Sam Backer right now. Uh, you know, with Dennis going out and Bryson being basically the primary buck for us right now, uh, really proud of how Danny's played. Well, what's the key for your defense going up against like a guy like Kyle Shermer who can – Chuck it all over the field. Well, they're going to be balanced in what they do. I think, first of all, they're going to give us some different motions and shifts. They do a really good job, and Andy does a, a really nice job week to week of giving you some things you've got to adjust to in the game uh, that maybe you haven't seen it, whether it's from a different personnel package or a, a, you know, a different motion or shift. So we've got a really good eye control and discipline in what we're doing. Uh, where you get hurt in the run game is they outflank you at times because of motions and shifts, and you don't adjust well and getting your eyes in the right spots. And that's uh, something we've worked on a lot. Uh, and then, you know, he just knows where to take the ball, whether it's middle field, split safety. He knows, you know, when the ball snap and turns over, do a good job of disguising, maybe force him in a bad situation. We're not going to show him anything he hasn't seen. He's a very experienced player, and he understands the game. And I think as much as anything, he really understands what they want to do offensively. And uh, But uh, takes the ball to the right spots. He's very accurate with the football. Uh, so, again, he's going to complete some passes. We just can't let him have explosive plays. How much did the outcome of that Vandy game two years ago help you and what you were trying to do in terms of rebuilding? Well, I think, any, you know, Josh, you and I have talked about it before. You've got to have some uh, positive reinforcement, and part of that's winning. Uh, you can't continue to coach and, and practice and, um, you know, prepare and work out the way we work out if you don't have some self-gratification of, of a victory and, and feeling that positive reinforcement. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what you're out there to do is go win the game. And do you and Derek share any defensive roots or philosophies that are the same? Is your, sy your systems cross paths back anywhere? No, I don't uh, – I, I, you know, we didn't talk ball much. You got a lot of respect for, you know, how his teams play. You know, his teams play hard. They play tough. They play physical. It's the same way when he was a defensive coordinator at uh, Stanford. 
Uh, but I got a lot of respect for what they do. Demised uh, came and played a very huge role for you last year, and he's going to play a huge role this year. But he is not starting. How does he handle that? And especially knowing that he's kind of a backup at three positions, but he's not a starter. Um, you know, he's upset about it, and, and I'm glad he is because he's a competitor. And that's, you don't want a guy to be happy he's not starting. I want them all to want to be starters. We want to be guys that play the whole game. But he's played as much or more than the guys that are in front of him. And uh, that's an evaluation that goes on week to week on who's going to help us win the game. And at the end of the day, be in the game when the game's ending. That's the most important part. Do you all prepare or, or game plan any differently for a guy, for a quarterback who's inexperienced versus a guy like Shermer who's been around the league for so long? I mean, I think you've got to be realistic on, on looks and pre-snap looks that you want to give a quarterback and maybe that a younger player that you might be able to bait into a throw where you're not going to be able to do that with a more experienced player that's probably seen a lot of those looks before. Uh, you got to be careful, especially in terms of never let disguise put you out of position, which that's what happens sometimes when you try and get too cute and disguise things and all of a sudden you can't get yourself in the half field and you got a problem. But, uh, you know, I don't know that, you know, we've got to, you know, make him make more decisions post-snap as, as opposed to pre-snap. And sometimes with younger quarterbacks, they're, they're just lucky to get their eyes in the right spots. Uh, so pre-snap, you know, uh, disguise isn't, isn't as important as maybe it is with an older player. You, you couldn't have played two more opposite teams in the defensive line than you played in your first two weeks. How do you think your offensive line handled the step up in competition with Georgia and, and how have they handled it since? I thought they handled it well. We didn't have any really pressure issues as far as uh, you know, uh, the protecting the passers concerned. I felt like man, most part of the run game we got a hat on a hat. You know, at the end of the day, we had some one on ones. Our backs got to make some people miss. That's bottom line. So I thought we did a, a decent job, and when we were called to in the in the run game, and I thought we did did a good job of protecting Jake. After two games, how do you kind of grade the play of your safeties overall? I'm not real pleased with where we are. Well, aside from making guys miss, you know, from your running backs, is there anything else that you maybe tweak or change or something that you're looking for from the run game this week? Well, again, just be, you know, again, there are going to be some. You're going to have to win some one-on-ones. You know, we talk to our players all the time about. It. I'm not just talking about the running back position, but whether it's your uh, a receiver outside or your cornerback outside covering or you're a linebacker in the hole with a running back, you got to win your one-on-ones. And when you play against good people, that's what you got to do. And so there'll be some one-on-one situations. We got to make a guy miss or run through a tackle and run through contact. Uh, continue to do, do a better job of protecting the quarterback when you're called on in protection and catch the football. Coach, with a lot of the young guys that are on this team playing their first road game, what advice do you give them heading into that game to prepare them for their first road game? Uh, you know, I think as much as anything, you lean on, lean on the older players uh, as far as their experience and traveling and understand it's a business trip and there's going to be a time that you need to focus and dial in and there's a time you can relax and uh, when you're on the plane and those sort of things. So a lot of these, some of these guys will be jump on the plane for the first time uh, you know, on Friday. So that, that's always interesting. Coach, is there a preference or a, how you decide whether you would rather take the ball first to start the game or go on defense? And I, I guess when you go on the road, does that play into it, matchups? What all goes into you? Because you all have opened with the ball both games this year. Um, we, wanted, we, we wanted to take the ball the first game. Uh, and, and in the second game, we, did, we, didn't, we, we didn't win the toss in the second game. They deferred. Um, I think that we, I always think in terms of matchups, you know, what is our best matchup? Our offense versus their defense, their defense versus our offense, our defense versus their offense. What's the best matchup? Obviously, weather is always a concern. Uh, you know, do you want the wind in the fourth quarter? It's going to be a tight ball game. Does the wind have a factor? Uh, is there going to be a storm hitting the second half? I mean, what is the forecast? Those are things that we, I look at and we have a lot of discussion about, you know, as far as those things are concerned. Uh, you know, playing on the road, you know, to me, if you got an experienced quarterback, that's not as, as much of an issue as maybe you have a younger quarterback that you might want to think through that process in those situations. Uh, but, you know, obviously you're always targeting to get 
out to a good start. You know, some games are, are more important than, than others as far as that's concerned. Uh, so I think that's a, that's a discussion that we have as a staff. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of thought that goes into whether or not we want to take the ball or, or kick or defer to the second half. Uh, kind of a follow-up on that, that safety question. What specifically, it, what specific areas do you kind of say you need that group to sort of improve in? On, on what? Safety. Communication. You know, it, it's implorable that we line up and leave a slot defender uncovered, which I don't know that's happened maybe once in my coaching career. It may have been sat last Saturday. So, or the last Saturday that we played. Um, that a middle field safety won't tell a young freshman to cover down on the slot. That's a huge major issue. Um, you know, but I would say communication is a, is a major issue for us and has been one through camp and now into our first two ball games. And that's, you know, if we do that better, then you put yourself in a position better to tackle better, which tackle's not been awful, but we need to tackle better, you know, and, and need to be more productive overall. You know, production. Communication a couple of times. How do you work on building that communication? Does it come with more practice reps or do you maybe look at maybe – making a change in the starting lineup to get someone that communicates a little bit. Well, better. I think both. We, we work with crowd noise about every day at practice. And the guy, you got to make guys signal. you are not going to be able to, in front of 80,000 people, verbally communicate. you got to hand signal. And that's, that's something that you got to always work on because you create really lazy habits when you verbally try to communicate in, in, in front of 80,000 people. So, so that's, that doesn't work well. And obviously, if, if you're not getting what you need, uh, you make a change. Now, if the change isn't communicating either, you know, we're not going to make a, a change it's for sake of making a change. Uh, Coach, um, special teams-wise, I mean, going back to that Georgia game, I know teams are kicking away from Debo. Has he been working at all maybe with punt returns, trying to bring that explosiveness out there? Or are you more concerned with just maybe possession and just being in good field position? Well, if they kicked it out of the end zone. They didn't kick it away from him. So. If, uh, but we're going to return it if we have opportunities. And I have all the confidence in the world that Brian Edwards will do a fantastic job as our punt returner. Um, after facing, you know, a team like a Coastal and then a team like a Georgia that has so much talent versus a team that might have a little less talent, do you feel like you, there's still a lot you don't know about this team just because of sort of the, the level of the two teams that they've had to face in the first two weeks? We've had two opportunities to play on Saturday, and, and, and we've been okay and, and not, not okay. I, I guess it's probably more of an emphasis at the pro level, but when, when your guys are getting after the quarterback, do you have to teach them or coach them like to be careful in the way they strike them and, and yeah. to be cognizant of, of what they do when they're wrapping up and all that? You've got to lower your targets. You can't lower them too much. They, can, they call that too. But you've got to keep you, the crown of the helmet out of all contact. Um, you know, you, and it, you know when you're talking in terms of protecting a, a defenseless player, which a quarterback in the pocket is a defenseless player, or a quarterback that is sliding is a defenseless player. So obviously, no head contact, but you got to lower your targets. You you, you got to get the head out of the out of the contact. We talk to our players about it all the time. Now, me and you sitting here having this conversation is a lot different when you're rushing a passer. You finally beat the 330 pounder that's been you've been headbutting against for four quarters, and you got an opportunity for a sack, uh, but you got to remember to keep your head out of it. That's it's it's very easy to be critical of a guy that doesn't necessarily get his head out of it, uh, and we talk about it and we coach it as hard as we can coach it. It's no different than tackling right now, you know. I mean, it's in in conversation of just. Us sitting here talking, it's a really easy conversation. But when you've got a 220-pound running back barreling down on you, lowering his head, and you're telling a guy not to lower his head and have a little bit of crown contact, which that's why you wear a helmet, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. I, I think they ought to have, you know, they have in soccer, they have yellow cards and green cards and all that. Well, some of these aren't malicious contact. Kick a guy out of the game if it's a malicious contact. But if it's not a malicious contact, if you want to give him a 15-yard penalty, that's fine. But we're going to kick a guy out of a game because he's tackling a guy on our sideline and the guy weighs 220 pounds and he's barreling down. You know, that's what I think. Well, you mentioned sometimes weather is a concern. I remember two years ago at Vandy you said you, you lined it up that way because you wanted the wind in the fourth quarter right. for Elliott. 
Who's in charge of that on staff for reading the weather and saying, we, we want this? Well, no one when they get it wrong. <laughs> but uh, now we talk about it and we go over our, and uh, George Winter, our football operations director, is every day at practice is going to give us a weather report on the weather. Clint Haggard loves to give us the weather report. Normally he's wrong. Uh, he's like most meteorologists. But, uh, um, but we, you know, we talk through. You know, it's going to be a if it's going to make a difference in the game that night. It obviously did make a difference, and it was a good decision on our part. Josh, yeah. last spring uh, seventeen, uh, Jalen Dickerson was viewed as a guy who could be a starter at safety. With all the injuries, haven't heard much about him since. What yeah. is is it physical, mental? That's kind of holding. No, he him missed back, about or? ten days of camp with a hamstring. And when a young player misses one day of camp, it's it's an issue. When you miss eight or ten days. It's a major issue, and it's very hard for a young player to catch up. Same with R.J. Roderick. He missed six or eight days with, with some uh, different issues uh, as far as illness and things are concerned. When a young player misses that much, that much of camp, it is really, really hard to catch him up, and we're trying to. And they're both two really good, young, talented players, and they're going to be good players. But when you miss that much time, especially for a young player that's not played on Saturday, it's very difficult to catch him up. And we're, we're doing the best we can, and they're doing the best they can. Yeah, I mean they're working hard, but it's just it's you know right now we're not we're, we're not into teaching middle field concepts. We're into teaching game plans, and it's very difficult right now to get those guys ready when they miss that much time and they missed a lot of time. Well, how do you get Debo maybe some more looks this week as opposed to to two weeks ago? He seemed a, a little non-existent sometimes, and that's probably just because the the matchups that that you guys were given from Georgia. Well, you know, I thought in the first half we were very effective getting the ball in some situations, you know. Um, whether or not we lined him up in the slot, we lined him up in the backfield, we lined him up as an outside receiver. Uh, so, and those, will, that, those looks will continue to happen. When you go three and out the first two series and Georgia keeps it for eight to ten play drives for three straight drives in the third quarter, <laughs> it's hard to get him the ball when he's standing on the sideline. So it's a team game. We got to do a better job of staying on the field on offense and getting off the field on defense, and I think that'll help us a lot. You mentioned kind of earlier targeting one on ones. Coming out of that Georgia game, did you feel like your receivers got the the best of one on ones, or is that an area you felt those guys needed to win more? Well, we had six drops, and if we caught six more balls, Jake would have completed completed seventy five percent of his passes, which is generally viewed as pretty good. So we need to catch the ball. All right, have a great day.